All right, how's it going, everybody? We're going <clears> to <throat> to begin. I'm going to do a redo of an old series called I called it on Telling Truth Archives. Um, election predestination word document A through Z or something like that. Um, hang on, let me find it exactly. Election parentheses predestination word document series one through eleven. And it was all done in Zoom, and it was the first uh, video series that I did when I began that YouTube channel. Then the Trump Antichrist series, of course, came next. And um, I'm going to kind of do a redo of it, this time in Zoom. And it ought to be much better. So without further ado, let's get going with it. The first thing we need to understand concerning the word of God is that God does not love everybody. That God only came for his sheep. And you know that in Matthew 15, 24. Jesus said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He only is here for his sheep. That's why those that will claim him with their lips, but never get called out of the world properly. They never are called to repentance enough. He will say to them, I never knew you. He only came for his, and it's those that the Lord knew from before the foundation of the world. And that's Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So he knew his sheep before he even made the earth. Then they're born into the earth lost. And then they get the calling. And that's what we're going to prove in this word document that again it took like 11 parts to go all the way through this it's every bible verse that i came across going through the new testament years ago now i'm sure i should have continued to add but we're going to cover and then it speaks up here having predestinated us. This is what is known as election predestination. So the next thing we need to get into is election. EF, EFG. So here's the word elect. You're picked out, chosen, chosen by God to obtain salvation through Christ. Christians are called chosen or elect. You're picked out. You're chosen. You're chosen by God. It clearly states that right there. We see that, right? Strong's Concordance, blueletterbible.com. This is election. The act of picking out, choosing the act of God's free will, which by, excuse me, the act of God's free will by which before the foundation of the world, he decreed his blessings to certain persons. You can't free will decision your way to salvation. That's the big lie. And if I were to do or click another picture, it would be the Martin Luther one. If any man ascribes anything of salvation, even the very least thing, to the free will of man, he knows nothing of grace and has not learned Jesus Christ rightly. So then we would go to Ephesians. And let's cover the grace verses. And 
they never give you verse 10. They just rattle off uh, eight and nine to tell you don't have to repent. For by grace you're saved. What is the grace? It's, it's God choosing you from before the foundation of the world through faith. So we need to now understand what faith is. Hebrews 111, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Whoops. It's 11 1. And Romans 10 17, King James Version, Bible Gateway. The seeing eye and the hearing ear, even the Lord have made both. That's Proverbs 20 12, yeah. Proverbs 2012, King James Version, Bible Gateway. So what is your faith? Faith is the tangible substance. It's something you could touch. It's evidence. And it's restated here. It's comma. And the same thing is restated again. What is your hope your blessed hope what are the things hoped for your blessed hope is your salvation faith is the evidence it's substance it's something you can touch you can put in your hands it's substance you can feel it it's mass faith is the substance of things hoped for in other words it's the things you could touch see feel hear of your salvation it's the evidence of things not seen. John 938, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Oh, hang on. Yeah, it's 38, not 98. So the wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone born of the Spirit. You can't see the Holy Spirit. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. So faith is the substance of your salvation. It's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Let's read it again. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. You do not see the Holy Spirit. Your blessed hope is your salvation. Faith is the substance. So it's not saying, I believe. It's not believing. It's getting the call and walking properly. That's why they said, Lord, increase our faith. Lord, increase our faith, Bible verse. They told Jesus to increase their faith. Luke 17, 5. Increase our faith. The apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. What are they asking him to do? Yell louder at us in our hearts through the Holy Spirit to make us walk more upright, to have more Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So that's what your faith is. It's tangible. It's works. James 2.26, King James Version, Bible Gateway. For as the body without the spirit is dead. In other words, just like your body without the Holy Spirit, you're dead. You're dead in your sins. So faith without works is dead also. We've just proven to you that faith is having the works, the evidence. It says here, 
faith without works is dead. So why the con job of not of your works, lest any man boast that they twist? Well, let's explain this passage properly. For by grace, or God choosing you from before the foundation of the world, for by grace you are saved through what? The calling that corrects you and makes you upright. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. For by grace you are saved through faith, through this calling process. It's not of yourselves. Jesus is calling you and making you walk properly with the proper works, giving you that tangible evidence. It is the gift of God. It is a free gift, folks. It is not of works. It is nothing you do on your own. When you say, I made a free will decision, I chose Jesus. Well, you're boasting, lest any man boast of their free will ability or powers to raise up their own body. In the South, no, the Lord must call you, and he will not call you unless he knew you, predestinated you, elected you from before the foundation of the world. Now, here's the last verse they don't give you because it starts to tell you the truth. It says, for we are his workmanship. Oh, God's doing it, right? It's not of your free will decision. Created in Christ Jesus. Created when? Uh, before the foundation of the world, previous chapter. Created in Jesus Christ unto the good works. Are good works necessary? I believe we just read that it is. Which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Before ordained when? Uh, before the foundation of the world. According as he have chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Another vase, uh, excuse me, another faith. I, I put faith and grace together. And don't even know what word came out of my mouth. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. That is your, and John the Baptist said, one will come after me that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And of course, the fire are the fiery trials. First Peter 4.12, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. That's your Holy Spirit and fire that John the Baptist spoke of. One will come after me that will baptize you of the Holy Spirit and fire. And that's the daily of dragging you and beating the world out of you. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. That all goes in concert with when Jesus said, the world hated me before it hated you, but I have called you. It's not your free will decision. I have called you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. And when you go through that process, Hebrews 12, 6 through 8, King James Version, Bible Gateway, Didn't load properly, did it? It says, for whom the Lord loveth, and we already have found out he doesn't love everybody. He only loves those that he came for, the lost sheep, those that he knew from before the foundation of the world, those that are elected. Well, whom the Lord loveth, he will lock you down and he will beat the world out of you. He chastens and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If you endure this chastening, God is dealing with you as if you are one of his sons for what real son does a real father not lock down, right? But if you be without this chastisement or this locking down and beating the world out of you process or all of God's sheep are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. So... 
And when we also, you need to get into John 10, 26 through 29. But ye believe me not, because ye are not my sheep. See, the broad way of the world is not his sheep. They will not understand. They might go to churches. They might say they believe in him, but what are they doing? They believe in free will. So they already got the wrong Jesus, and Jesus is the truth. So they got the wrong truth, so they got the wrong Jesus. You don't, you're not going to get salvation, eternal life, by having the wrong Jesus. It's impossible. That's why they all run and they're like, didn't we? Lord, Lord, didn't we do many wonderful works in your name and, you know, go to church every Sunday and praise you and worship you? And what does he say to them? I never knew you. Doesn't work. Claiming them, wanting them, hoping for them. Doesn't work. He has to know you. He has to call you. Says, ye believe me not because ye are not my sheep. Who is me? But ye believe not. Excuse me. But ye believe not. I didn't say ye believe me not. But Jesus is the truth. You will not believe the truth if you're not his sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice. Only the sheep hear the truth, understand the truth. I know them, which is the exact opposite of what? Matthew 7, 23. I never knew you. He says, I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they, the predestinated elected sheep, shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. There's no free will involved. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Now, we know Jesus and God are the same, along with the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are just different pathways that God, the Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, comes to humans. It's just different pathways. It's the same God, one God. When people start saying he's three persons, throw them out. And they're like, well, in Elohim, let us make man in our image. It's, 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 it's like the God talking to Jesus. No. Wrong. You break down Elohim, it even includes angels. So stop it. Stop the lies. So we then have to move to John 6. And you get over here to 39, and he says, and this is the Father's will. Remember. Election, the act, the free will act of God choosing his from before the foundation of the world. And this is the Father's will which have sent me that all, all what? All elected predestinated sheep, which he have given me. When was that? Uh, from before the foundation of the world. I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Got that? Now watch this. No man can come to me, Jesus said, except the Father which have sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. See that? You can't even come to Jesus unless God the Father draws them to Jesus. That whole process began from before the foundation of the world. State it again. Therefore, I said unto you that no man can come unto me, Jesus speaking, no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Does this all sound harsh? Well, let's first do Romans 8, 29 through 30. And then we're going to go through all explaining the fairness of it. Because it sounds rough. It sounds mean. But humans don't have the capacity to come to the Lord. 
there wouldn't be anybody saved if the Lord didn't do this. That's the point. So for whom he did foreknow, which we just got through reading that in John. I'll bring, I want to bring all three of those up, by the way. So I want to bring this Matthew. I want to bring this Matthew 7 up. I think that's very important to also have. This is dot connecting. 101 is what it is. Remember, you got the broad way and you got the narrow way. The narrow way are those that he knew from before the foundation of the world. You see where it says right here, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. And he says here, I know them and they follow me. And it says right here, for whom he did foreknow. He foreknew them. He knew them from before the foundation of the world. It says those that he did foreknow, he also did predestinate them, right? Yes. To be conformed to the image of his son, in other words, salvation, that, that they might be first born among many brethren, in other words, salvation. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, from before the foundation of the world, them he also called. So you will get that spiritual blood baptism. It is not getting dunked in water. How many people get dunked in water and, and celebrate Christmas through to the day they die, believing in free will? Getting dunked in water and claiming Jesus with your mouth doesn't work. It's fake. It's fake dogma. It's just another man-made religion out there. You cannot walk into a building today and get the truth. Cannot, 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 cannot do it. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. That is your baptism by the Holy Spirit and your fiery trials are what? And whom he called, them he also justified. And that's when he starts beating the world out of you. I might have lost that one already. That Hebrews 12, 6 through 8, for whom the Lord loveth, he chastens and scourges. Yeah. So when you are going through the fiery trials of getting locked down and the world beaten out of you, which will lead for, to the world hating you, the world hated me before I hated you, but I've called you out of the world. Therefore, the world hate of you. That's another one to get into is John 15. It says right here, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you. Well, we just read that in grace, didn't we? Before ordained that you walk in them before ordained created in christ jesus before ordained he chose us it's that's what grace is him choosing you you have not chosen me but i have chosen you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask of the father in my name he may give you people are like well he's just speaking to the apostles that's not to all the world okay it says right here these things i command you that you love one another is that just for the apostles or for sheep to sheep? He's still speaking to the apostles. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Is he just talking to the apostles or is that for us too? can't have it both ways you can't say oh that's for the apostles but that's that's for all of us oh that's for the no this is my commandment that you love one another as i've loved you is that just for the apostles or is that for all of us loving one another is sheep loving sheep folks not loving the whole world 
So now you get into John 3.16. which is why that Bible verse has been shoved up your nose your whole life because it's been falsely translated by the Catholic Erasmus. For God so loved his, I don't know, the fifth definition on down, the inhabitants of the earth, men, the human family, is that what God loves? No, he loves his harmonious arrangement his order of things, his government, his kingdom, his arranging of his sheep, his arrangement, his orderly arrangement. This is all, this whole earth is for his sheep. That's what God so loved. Well, Erasmus Textus Receptus Wikipedia Erasmus, Wikipedia. See, Erasmus was a Catholic humanist. Crowning glory of the Christian humanist. Humanism puts man over any deity. That's why they made it man's free will in John 3.16 when he, when he was doing cosmos going through every Greek word and transcribing it over to English, he chose the wrong definition. He also wrote on free will. See, he believed in free will. He's Catholic. Free will is Catholic. What is Textus Receptus? It's known as the received text written by Erasmus, Catholic. It was used to write the King James Bible. This is what the King James used. It's the best we have. And you would say, why did God allow the Bible to be written improperly in certain places? Because Jesus spoke in parables. Jesus is the word. And so the word of God is one big parable. It's not meant to be understood, but only by his sheep. It's understood from a spiritual context. It says the natural man or the fifth definition of cosmos, the, the whole human world personage, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. You have to be elected to that. You have to be selected to that. God has to call you to that. All lost sheep will live a life of a goat until they get the call. I mean, I was a Catholic astrologer, for goodness sakes. It says, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The truth of the spirit of God, and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, You, only through the spirit can you understand the truth. You cannot free will and study your way into it. So we know that the King James was written by half Catholics and half Protestants. King James' mom was Bloody Mary, who was trained by the Jesuits. She was a queen of the Jesuits, the Catholics, the Jesuits. So Jesus is only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's his predestinated elect. It's those that he chose from before the foundation of the world. It's those that were created in Christ Jesus, the ones that were before ordained in Christ Jesus. It's the ones that get the call and will have the tangible, they will have real faith, not a fake faith. They will have the, it says now faith is the substance of, these, these predestinated elected will have the substance of salvation. They will have evidence of the Holy Spirit. Faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. John the Baptist said, one will come after me that will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. So your faith comes by hearing Jesus. And of course, also, when you hear the word of God, you will understand it truthfully. When, when, we, when you get the call, when the time comes, it says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So your faith comes by hearing Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the word of God. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the word of God. So your true hearing, it says the hearing ear and the seeing eye, even the Lord have made both of them. You cannot properly hear the truth, see the truth, unless the Lord creates that in you, which would have taken place from before the foundation of the world. So in this Word document, we're going to start going through all, I want to close with one more set of items. By the way, I told you what Martin Luther said. I showed you that quote earlier. You might want to watch this two or three times. <clears throat> Books on Erasmus arguing with Martin Luther over free will. Martin Luther began the protest reformation. Erasmus believed in free will. Free will is Catholic. Erasmus was Catholic. Martin Luther was Protestant. He protested against the Catholic Church. Martin Luther hated the concept of free will. What's taught in your churches today? Baptist, Method, any of them, free will. Now you know why they celebrate Christmas, the pagan tree. Do not learn the way of the heathen. Jeremiah 10, verses 2 through 4, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree, right? The tree. Out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails, with hammers that it move not. That's your Christmas tree, folks. They cut the tree out of the forest. They fasten it down with hammers and nails so it doesn't move, and they deck it with silver and gold. And it says, learn not the way of the heathen. For they are dismayed at the signs of heaven. What do they put on top of your Christmas tree? A star, signs of heaven. Or they put a female angel when there's no such thing as female angels. But, of course, Lucifer is the female shape-shifted version of the male fallen angel satan as he's transformed himself into the angel of light lucifer is light venus lucifer isis inanna gaia mother earth queen of heaven queen of the universe astarte every bit of this folks Like the computer's frozen i don't know are we working here all right so we've covered ephesians 1 4 and 5 i'm sorry computers just froze up i don't know what's going on ephesians 2 8 9 and 10 we've covered faith hebrews 11 verse 1 
Yeah, computer's working real slow. Something's going on. We've covered faith. Romans 10, 17. Proverbs 20, 12. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, even the Lord have made both. Now what I want to do is get into Proverbs 16, 4. I want to get into... Isaiah 46.10. I want to close out with these, and then we'll get to um, what I promised you in Romans. Isaiah 45.7. All right. You see, God has declared the end from the beginning. He's already chosen his sheep from before the foundation of the world. He's already written the book of Revelation from the book of Genesis. He's declared the end from the beginning. Revelation's already been written. He's not waiting on little Johnny to make a free will decision. Sheep are born sheep. Goats are born goats. Sheep are born lost. They get the call. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times to the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand. I will do my pleasure. This is all about God's pleasure. And that's what we're going to get into to close this out. Romans 9, 11 through 24. Let's go to Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is not a good versus evil world. All the evil of the earth, God has ordained it. That's why he said to those goats, ye are of your father, the devil. Because if you're born a goat, you are of your father, the devil, from the day you're born to the day you die. Even if you're the nicest sweetest person on earth mother teresa proverbs 16 4 the lord have made all things for himself yes even the wicked for the day of evil which of course is the abomination of desolation let's close it out with paul explaining the fairness of this because this sounds like a horrible thing doesn't it <clears throat> Now, you know why God has to wipe away all our tears? Because at judgment, you're going to see your friends and family, which are goats, weeping and gnashing their teeth. You're going to see that they were not loved by the Lord. They're going to see that you were loved and they weren't. There's going to be a lot of tears on both sides. And God has to wipe away those tears before he then cleans your mind of all of it and makes all things new. And then you're with him in heaven for eternity. And you're not going to recall your past. That's why you're not in there with your wives, spouses, children. Oh, well, I'll see him in heaven. The dead are asleep right now. They're not with God. Their souls are, but they're not conscious of anything. That's why the dead in Christ are raised first. We're asleep, Daniel said in Daniel 12, 2. For the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil. So before you're born, whether you've done any good or evil, it says that the purpose of God, according to election, we already read the definition of election, did we not? That the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that, what? Calleth. The Lord has to call you. That is your baptism by the Holy Spirit. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. So he's going back and he's telling you some stories now about how it's always been this way, even in the Old Testament. But this is a New Testament story based off everything we've shown you in the New Testament. Everything I've shown you is New Testament, folks. Abraham's faith 
came. Why? Because Abraham was born to do. God declared the end from the beginning. The whole story of Abraham was declared before the earth was formed. When Abraham was born on this earth, just to give you an example, Titus 3.11, King James Version, Bible Gateway. I never remember this Bible verse. When I was cut from my mother's womb and called by his grace. I don't know why. It's Galatians 1. Why can I never remember that Bible verse? Galatians 1.15. But when it pleased God, because this is all about God's will, is it not? Who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. This was Paul talking. Well, Paul was born Saul and was a Pharisee bounty hunter killing Christians or taking part in it before he got the call from Jesus in Acts 9 on the road to Damascus. Without the call, Saul would have stayed Saul killing Christians until the day he died. There was no free will involved. He was called. So, but he is saying, when separated from his mother's womb. So he's saying, when I was born, I was already under grace. Because why? Because it took place originally from before the foundation of the world. So he's born, he's already under grace. Because he was born to be called and brought through the process of proper repentance. And if you want to have an idea of proper repentance, Galatians 5, 19 through 21, King James Version, Bible Gateway. What you'll be called out of is adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavaciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murdering, drunkenness, revelings. Those which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom, it says. He will call you out of those before you die. That's the arguing, the bickering, the fighting, the hatred, cheating on spouses, having sex without being married. All of that. He will call you out of that before you die, if you're his. But when you're born, you're already his. That's what Paul's saying. When it pleased God who separated from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. But he didn't get the true calling until the road to Damascus. But he's saying, I was already a sheep. I was just lost until I got the call on the road to Damascus. So he's already under God's grace. Of Grace, again, is God choosing you from before the foundation of the world. All right, so for children not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election, which we gave you that definition earlier, make sure that you watch this over and over. According to election, which remember is God's free will decision from choosing his from before the foundation of the world. Do I still have that up there? Yeah. The act of picking out, choosing, the act of God's free will, which by which before the foundation of the world, he decreed his blessings to certain persons. For the children not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand not of works. It's not of anything you do. But of him, which is God, that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. It's now going back and explaining that this has been like this since the Old Testament days. As it was written, Jacob I have loved and Esau I have hated. Now, we're back to present day New Testament. Which is what all of this has been about. What shall we say then, Paul is saying? Is there unrighteousness with God? 
God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth. It's not of your free will, folks, nor him that runneth. It's not of your free will. But it's God that showeth mercy. This is spoken of again in John 1, 11 through 13. He came into his own, which were the Jews. And those scribes and Pharisees, right, received him not. They put him to death. But as many as received him, to them he gave power. But why did they receive him? Well, because they were called. To them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And we already showed you that belief and faith is not what they tell you. It's not just claiming it. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. It is a proper call. Matthew 15, 8. These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Even to them that this belief here is a proper faith, a proper belief. It's the tangible substance. It's the tangible evidence. Faith without the proper true works is dead. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man. You cannot free will it. There is no free will. It's, but it is born of God. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. Now you're going back to the Old Testament again. Showing you some proof. Back in the days of the Old Testament, Pharaoh was created for no other purpose but to be Pharaoh. He had no free will decision in the matter whatsoever. For the same purpose that I raised Pharaoh up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name I declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, he have mercy on whom he will have mercy, and on whom he will hardeneth in other words all the goats that will say unto me why does god find fault because who has been able to resist what he's declared who has resisted his will and paul again states nay but oh man who are you to reply against god shall the thing formed in other words you that's been made say to him that made you why hast thou made me this way? Why hast thou made me thus? Doesn't God have power over the humans to make some of them sheep and some goats? Or some goats and some sheep? Or excuse me, some sheep and some goats, if I do it in proper order. Have not the potter power over the clay to make the same lump? to make one vessel unto honor and the other unto dishonor. Let me read that again. Have not the potter, God, power over the clay, humans, of the same lump of clay, right? To make one vessel unto honor, sheep, and another unto dishonor, goats. Now I'll just read the whole thing. Now you understand what it means. Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and the other and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath, yikes, right? Let me put that in yellow. Can't do it, can I? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make one, excuse me, what if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, Endured with much long suffering, what? The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, born to lose. No chance whatsoever.
they were fitted to destruction. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, that's his sheep, which he had what? Afore prepared unto glory. When was that? Before the foundation of the world. Even us whom he hath called not of Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, because here in the New Testament, it's all types of flesh be saved, all flesh be saved. So I want to close out with one more item that uh, I thought of while reading that. And you got to take it to Revelation 17, 8, where it's talking about the end times and those that are falling for the tricks of Satan being handed over to the strong delusion that they will believe a lie. It said, and who are those? Those whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. All goats. It says right there, their names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, from the foundation of the world, because God declared the end from the beginning. So the sheep were chosen from before the foundation of the world. And then once the foundation of the world was spoken into existence, all goats were. But their names weren't written in the book of life. Whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When he declared all things. Sheep are born sheep. Goats are born goats. Sheep are born lost. I love you very much. This is the tutorial. This is part one. This is your introduction to election predestination tutorial. Love y'all. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.